biggest baby mats is uh, almost seven, too. Six and a half. This is Cody. Uh, Cody is 11 and a half. He's our senior dog. Cody. 11 and a half. Cody migrate. Was born in Australia. Lived most of his life in New Zealand before migrating here. This is Riza. She's, they think she's between one and two. We're not sure exactly. When we went to Cara to make donation with my youngest daughter for her bake sale money, uh, we went and just visited the dogs and we spent most time with the cats. But when we visited the dog area, we were playing with them all uh, in the cages. And Riza and the one next to her actually really stood out. They're, they were really friendly. And she, her mannerism also reminded us a bit of our dog that, that there she was barking, our dog that died uh, last year. And so then we saw her photo and her history. And so when we came out that day, we felt really bad. And we feel that, you know, we have plenty of space. We love animals. We have the medical history with the photo. But my understanding is she was found in May last year. So almost a year ago, right outside Cara, Cara office. She had no, no hair. She had a, like a tick disease and really malnourished, like skin and bones. So we just felt really, I mean, they all have such sad stories in, in that place, but because she looked so sad in the photo and she was so sweet when we met her. She have an injection every two weeks, so we have to take her to the vet, and that's to, uh, for her general um, immunity and also her skin condition, because she had very bad mange, and she's on a daily vitamin. And because of her history, uh, she has sensitive skin, so we just have to be careful that whatever we feed her is uh, good for her skin. <laughs> you can see she looks pretty happy. I mean, it's hard to imagine that a dog like that was what she was before. Uh, I guess she's lucky. There are a lot of animals out there like that, but she's, she's a lucky one. She got saved by Kara, and now she's got a great home. And, and you know, they just need love, really. <laughs> That's all they really need. And love and, and basics food, water, shelter. There are lots of animal lovers in the Philippines. You see pets everywhere. I would just encourage people to adopt. You know, there's so many animals that, are, that need a good home rather than going and paying a lot for a pedigree when you can get just a sweeter dog from a shelter. Going back in the past, ano tayo, parang agricultural land tayo. So, exposed tayo sa iba't ibang klase ng mga hayop, may mga baka, may mga kalabaw, may mga kambing, and dyan na rin talaga yung mga aso at pusa. Um, talagang mahilig lang talaga tayo sa mga hayop. Ngayon, itong mga aso at pusa, sila yung mga alaga nating hayop na pwede nating pasok sa loob ng bahay, katabi sa pagtulog. Um, sila rin yung very affectionate. Kaya tayo rin merong mga stray dogs and stray cats kasi meron tayo mga pet shops. Yung mga pet shops, yun yung mga nagtitinda sila ng mga aso, pusa na may lahi. Tapos may mga tao naman na parang mas gugustuhin pa nilang bumili ng mga alagang aso at pusa kesa mag-adopt. That's why yung mga pounds talagang um, they have to resolve into euthanizing them. Talagang kailangan silang patulugin kasi hindi naman sila pwedeng nandun lang sa pound habang abutan sila ng natural cause ng death nila dahil mahaba pa yon hindi rin nauubos yung mga aso at pusa sa kalye na kailangan nilang kunin dahil syempre um, liable din sila sa batas yung Anti-Rabies Act na kailangan talaga kukunin yung mga aso at pusang gala lalo na yung mga aso aside from that, yung pagkapon din yung pagligate, pagkastrate ng mga aso at pusa hindi pa siya talaga ganun ka kauso kumbaga dito sa atin kasi meron pa ring cost meron pa ring kailangan bayaran para dito pero hindi kasi natin na-realize na yun yung tamang gawin para sa mga alaga natin yun yung tamang ginagawa ng isang responsabling um, tagapag-alaga ng mga aso at pusa kailangan silang ipakapon 